Hello everybody and welcome back to AK Academy and Ahmed Muzaffar here with you today. We are back on AK Expenses Tracker, this uh, frozen course for almost um, seven, eight months, something like that. But we are back. At least we are back at a certain stage. So things are still going. I'm, I'm getting some emails, messages and comments that this course is awesome. Let's keep going on it. So I decided to do that because yeah, there will be, there will be a video talking about the future of this channel and how things will go in the near future but for now we are back on AK Expenses Tracker. So the topic we'll be talking about today away from the business logic when we started this course like uh, it was .NET 6 or maybe the beginning of .NET 7 I don't remember exactly um, what happened is .NET 6 was great it's a long-term supported version of .NET and cool then .NET 7 came then and Right now we are on .NET 8. So in Azure Functions, we do have two different hosting models, in-process and isolated. So with .NET 8, Microsoft decided that there would be in-process support will no longer be there. So we have to go with the isolated uh, no matter what. So that's actually good. It's not a bad thing, but we have a migration process. So before we start the migration, which is the goal of this video, I'm there is an amazing article from Microsoft describing the differences between them, but um, I'm going just to go over it so quickly. Basically, the isolated, uh, you have your application running uh, in isolation from the Azure, the Azure function host or the runtime itself. So there is an isolation. While in process, your Azure function application is running in the same process of the function runtime. So what does that mean? We have you, to make it simple, you think of your application just like a normal ASP.NET Core application running. So right now the functions is very similar to or with the isolated worker process, your Azure Functions project is very similar to um, ASP.NET Core Web API. And it works uh, on its own process and there, there is some kind of communication between the Azure Functions uh, runtime itself when it's uh, hosted on inside the Azure Functions app on Azure. So what's the benefits out of this? The benefit is first, this is the supported version from now on and in a process is that's it. And we do have a um, richer uh, kind of types to deal with the triggers like the HTTP trigger here we have, we can have HTTP request data or HTTP request response data action result all this stuff but the amazing part is right now we can have middlewares so you can have some pieces of code to be run before your function starts and after it ends so this will allow us to a more um, flexible error handling logging and stuff like that this is all a good things um, and all other stuff is supported application insights dependencies by default cancellations tokens all of this thing so if you want to learn more you can uh, refer to this function you can find the url in the description box below and we are going to get started with the migration process right now. So it's very straightforward, very basic. We will upgrade the project overall from .NET 6 to .NET 8, mark it as isolated. Then we need to modify the functions project settings to say we are going to use .NET isolated, set up and register the services, because right now we have a new file like program.cs, very similar to the one in ASP.NET Core, not, no longer that uh, featured startup.cs specifically for Azure Functions and we just set up Swagger and open AI API and we are good to go. So let's go to Visual Studio and get this started. If you are if you're having the latest version of Visual Studio, one great thing you will see that if you right click on the project itself, you will find a, a new menu item called upgrade. So if you click on that, this is the .NET uh, upgrade assistant. So this will allow actually to upgrade your projects automatically. So it will do mo most of the stuff for us. So we'll click in here and we need to go for to .NET 8. .NET 9 is here, but .NET 8. So we can click next. This is the files you want to upgrade and we just hit upgrade. We waited for a couple seconds and we will have our project mostly upgraded. All right, so the components has been upgraded. That's good. Now, if we open like, let's see what happened. So you can see we have a program.cs, very similar to ASP, we have mentioned. Startup.cs, this one will, will retire. We're going to remove this one shortly. And yeah, here it's referencing the, uh, the worker stuff, some new assemblies. You can see here there is no 
uh, open ABI by default is not there we are going to set it up in a later stage but the next thing we need to do after this right now all good set to dotnet 8 output the tie bxe so that's all handled for us uh, packages have been upgraded too so the next thing is we need to go to the local dot settings dot json here and we have functions worker runtime make sure to set this to dotnet isolated um, if the Azure function uh, upgrade assistant didn't set it, just open that and it, it should be .NET. So you can just type .NET is related and you're good. That's it. So right now, if you don't have dependencies and stuff like that, your project will going to work. That's fine. But we have services registered in here. And right now the dependency injection container is inside the program.cs. So we have to migrate those. Let me copy uh, all this code. Put it here. And I'll go to uh, program.cs and let's add here a new method called configure services. It's like that. And here create uh, context and services. Okay, Copilot trying to do all the work for us, but we'll do it ourselves. And we can just say context.configuration. This is the host builder and this is the iService collection. And right now we we can just do a quick quick final replace builder.services make it just small s and here we go. Okay, that's a quick, that's very quick. Now uh, we just had to add some usings. So this one, okay, using Microsoft extensions dependency injection. We have some for computer vision, the AI service that we added previous videos and we have cosmos db client and those from the data project we, we are not going to add them here we'll add a new global using file global usings and we'll add them here so okay so global using tracker ah here we do, we do have a typo in interface dot server dot data and dot shared okay all right let's save here we go that's it so right now we have said this all good we can go ahead and remove the startup.cs okay delete it perfect so what's left we have handled the setup and the register of the services the last thing just open ai we just have to uh, install the package for for the isolated model and uh, we can remove this okay i will right a click click on manage NuGet packages and here we search for microsoft.azure.functions.worker.extensions.openai well we find it yeah here we go this is it open api and click install okay got it so we have it right now and we can add the missing namespaces. So which is this one attributes. And I think there is another one, which is the core or models. Okay, the models and oops, we still have one more. And the enums, yep. Okay, now I'm going to Copy those three and put them in the global usings. So do that and then click shift all down global. There we go. Good. Save. And that's it. We have it all. Um, so right now, I think all our functions should be should be good. Do you still have something missing? No, all good. Okay, great. Let's upgrade those back projects very quick. Uh, we can use the assistant, but I think this is quicker. Uh, just click on the shared .NET 8 and use the 8 version of this. Save. Wait a bit. Here we go. Okay. All good. Right now, let's rebuild. Brilliant. We got it. So let's run and make sure that it's everything is fine. I hope it's fine. This is the project, come on. Yeah, here we go. So 
uh, well, we have this one. Let me try to click on the Swagger endpoint and see if we have it. Yeah, look at that. We do have Swagger. Our project runs. Let's try to make an API call. Bring Postman to the screen. And we'll go to list user wallets. And let's hit send. Check what's the terminal showing for us. Yeah, it has been called successfully. And yeah, look at that. We got the wallets. So that's good. It's working. All good. So we have our project right now, .NET 8, Swagger supported, um, .NET isolated, so out of process, all perfect. That's all that we have to do. Right now we can proceed with the list of the, with the rest of the functionality that we have, which is sending emails. There is some paging for transactions to do and security with B2C. We have a plenty of stuff. Unit tests, refactoring, as I've promised early in this course, late, but we are still going. So I hope you enjoyed it, you find it useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.